Welcome to Russell's Military Vehicles. This is where Jeeps and military vehicles come back to life. We bring them back from the graveyard and we bring them back to life. This is real life TV. It don't get no realer than this. I don't know. They're all different. Something might be broke inside. This ain't none of that Hollywood, throw it the wrenches in there and get mad and have a naked woman come walking by. When I get up and come down here, my goal is to have fun. But there's more to it than that. In building these Jeeps, it's like bringing a ghost of their past back to life. Nothing like it. So a man called me one day from Jacksonville, Florida by the name of Herschel Shepard. One of the nicest men I think I have ever met in my life. He said, I got an interesting project for you. Would you come and look at it? So we jump in the truck and we head to Jacksonville, Florida. So Mr. Herschel, let's go see what's in the barn. I'm ready. All right, I'm gonna follow you. It's your barn. Y'all ready for this? I'll guarantee you not very many people have seen this. He opens up a 75 year old barn doors can't open we have to wedge them open and in sits there a duck a d-u-k-w world war ii d-day landing amphibious truck man man check out history 1943 d-u-k-w mr herschel this is a 43 45 45 original anchor none of them have the original anchor None of them have this central inflation system. That's not a new thing. That has been around since 1943. That is rare. Jiminy Cricket. Woo! Mm -hmm. Is that the original wood floor in here? That's, those are the original floorboards. Now, Mr. Herschel, tell me this. Where did you say this was used last? It was probably in Missouri. And it came with a camper body on it, which I which I used as a scaffold to build this garage. Are you sure it's going to come out of here? I don't know. We're going to see. <laughs> I saw it advertised in one of these publications that are made for the construction industry after the war for $2,500 a piece. So I called them up and found out that they had all been sold. But the owner told me that he would call me back if any were ever returned. And about six months later, he called me back. It's not one that you might want because it's been modified, but it has all of the original running in equipment, including the air inflation system. It has all the instrumentation, uh, but it has a camper body on it. I decided I probably would never have a chance to buy one again, so I said, okay. The camper body was taken off and the other parts were brought over from a scrapped duck that was in Mr. Paramore's yard. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Paramore. Hootie Paramore. I loved him like a dad. I did too. These are the original top bows for this thing. Uh, those are the top bows. Two of them are original. Holy Jimmy Cricket. <laughs> what color is this thing on me? Olive Drab 33070, sir. And it have a big star on the front up there on the cowling of the engine compartment. Six cylinder GMC engine. Same thing as a CCKW cargo truck from World War II, except they just said put a boat around it. Six wheel drive. Once it hit the beach, they could deflate the tires a little bit so it wouldn't stick. It was because of this we won the war. Well, the troops. But they used this. Thank God for our troops in World War II. You'd be speaking German. Yeah, the DUKW, the duck, as uh, the troops called it, was. Uh, Fastly, quickly developed, 1942. It was used for amphibious landings to carry troops and ammunition. Instead of having a, a boat, you get up to the shore, and then what? Then you had the logistics of putting it on a truck. Anyway, it was developed and built in Louisiana, and a factory put those things together. It was designed to put the people on it, put the ammunition on it, even put the Jeep in it, hit the beaches, and keep going. It had a propeller, a rudder, and six tires. So once it got through the rough ocean seas, which could haul 6,000 pounds, it would keep going and actually take that amphibious duck all the way in inland with all the same things it was loaded on the boat so there was no stopping at the beach. The technology of then was amazing. I had always thought that it would be nice to have a duck uh, because it is one of the most interesting creations to me of, of World War II. It's a very complex 
machine, and I think having worked on it now for and just looked at it and studied it for this number of years, I really realize how complex it is and how many people had to work together in a very short time to put this amazing thing together. All right, this is this is the one moment I've been waiting on right here. Oh my God! Wow! The motor. This hadn't been changed at all. It's still is it six volt or twelve? Were they twelve? Six. They were six. Regulator still there. Air governor still there. And the, and the front hatch, the air compressor still there. Under your feet. Right there, yeah. Right. Let's take a look at that. Oops. It is heavy. We'll strap that down. Let's see. Oh, my goodness gracious. There it is. There it is. This is in great shape. Well, I was kind of really amused to see his reaction because I think he suddenly realized that this <laughs> this thing is complete. That is impossible to find. The anchor on one. They threw those things overboard and didn't care, but that is an original. There's people that would just die. That needs to be stayed with this thing. That's like it's pants. It's just gotta have it. You just gotta have it. Nothing on here is just common. Nothing. Nothing in this barn is common. When I first talked to Russell, I said, Russell, I'll give this to you with the agreement that you will try to restore it and see it using whatever means you wish, but see that it ends up in an, in an accredited museum somewhere. Until you experience something in three dimensions, if you touch it, uh, you really sort of become part of it. And I don't think you can really understand the complexity of some of these things this thing is incredible. I'm just overwhelmed. So nice. He had the attitude of just, hey, Russell, I want to leave a legacy. And I'm going to tell you, I could spend days just sitting at the table. He, he invites you in your house. We have lunch together. His wife has drinks and sandwiches for us. And it's like I've known him for 30 years. Thank you. 1943 Dodge Command Car. This is what Patton actually wrote in right here. Not this one. Russell is in his natural habitat, but he has now changed channels. He was on the History Channel for most of the day, but now he's moved on to American Pickers. And so now we are picking. I just love looking. I don't care if I took anything home. I just like digging. Yo, this, I, just could, I could do this every day. There are American pickers, and they're all kind of pickers, but my picking is a little different. Hey, Mr. Herschel, now we don't want your bicycles to go. You got to keep them here, right? No, those are yours. Oh, really? <laughs> Absolutely. They're not on the list, but they're yours. You just don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> what about these hand grenades in this cabin right here? They, no, no, <laughs> no hand grenades. Okay. I walk into the junkyards, the old salvage yards, the old surplus yards. I see something that's just rusted, beat up, and I'll see a gold mine. I don't care for gold. I care for rust. I'm gonna tell you, I've seen everything from a World War II Jeep to a, a GPA to a coot. And yes, that's a military vehicle. A growler, a mule, and I don't mean one that kicked. Uh, Vietnam Jeeps, World War II Jeeps, massive trucks, small trucks, and you never know what you're gonna get. Life is like a box of chocolates, but I'm looking for army green. <laughs> I'm, five, I'm salivating. Jimmy Creek. This is a 43 Dodge your, Command Car. In your birthday you Just did. It was 31st. So belated. That means I should get double. Yeah, when you're picking, you have to be very careful of where you're picking, what you're picking, and how you're picking. Now, I mean, how, if you step on the hood of an old Jeep that might not have the integrity it used to have from 40 or 50, 75 years ago, you're going to be inside that Jeep. Always bring extra shirts. Now, down here in South Georgia, we have what they call humidity. Snakes, spiders, listen, down here everything bites you, kicks you, spits you, the heat gets you. It's just dangerous. So you got to be careful. You don't just walk in these junkyards down here without 
some protection. You gotta have weapons. I've been attacked by rattlesnakes. I've been attacked by moccasins. And of course, wasp. Oh, I don't like wasp. That's your biggest threat is a wasp. You go to pick up a piece of metal, there's something underneath it. You gotta be careful. Picking here is not like picking in the north. You got the cold air, everything goes dull and docile. Down here, everything comes alive. Oh, now here we come with a serious question. How are we gonna get this thing out of here, Russell? Uh, I was a little nervous. Yeah, man, you be on Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you have the transmission in gear and not in neutral. But I'll tell you, this guy, Russell, is such a genius in drive, driving this truck. I, he backed this huge trailer into my little driveway with this leaning tree up here. And I was really worried about getting the duck out under the tree, particularly on this trailer. At first, we thought we would have to roll it into the street and then lo load it up. But Russell said no, and we put it up on, on the back of this trailer with a winch that he's got, and by golly, he sneaked that thing out of here as slick as a whistle. We're not going to load it. I'm going to get out of the way. Once we get it out here, then we can pull it with the trucks. Yes. Yes. I like it when things come together. I have to teach Dallas. Never say It ain't going to work. Never say that. Never. Yes, we're all electric. We're an EV, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. What the hell is that thing? It's called a duck. Here we go. No casualties. Nobody was hurt. Duck is in great shape. That is no 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 mailboxes, no neighbors were were incensed. At least I haven't heard from them yet. Not openly. <laughs> not, not openly. When you have an interest and you pursue it and stick to it, uh, sometimes there are amazing rewards, and so I have no regrets for spending that 2,500 bucks. You meet all kinds of people out here, all walks of life, lawyers, doctors, plumbers, electricians, farmers. That's the neatest thing about going out and driving on the road. You get to meet those people like that that mean a lot to this country. The importance of our swap meets, uh, we go to military swap meets, is the fact that it's the people that you meet. The people that I meet outlive the property they have and their stories. But with that, it's amazing their passion they have for their Jeep. Check out the air filter box. Oh my goodness, I love it. You are a genius. You are, a, look at you. This is, <laughs> this is genius. This is, military ain't got nothing on this man. Did you do this? Yeah, me and my buddy. Listen, all them shows that go about building stuff, there's the real deal. Right? That's the real deal. Bump the television show. One man operation. This is great. We're here in Zephyr Hills, Florida. I'm standing here with Dave Thomas. And uh, Dave Thomas is the president of the first Florida chapter of the MBPA. And on my right, Stan Kimmeth. He's our secretary. 
Well, not only that, we've been longtime friends. But I'm gonna let Dave kind of explain more about our first Florida chapter and what we do. And our, our motto is history in motion. We're one of the few chapters that have tanks, jeeps, trucks, everything that are fully functional. We're one of the few clubs that you can walk up and actually touch the tanks, the jeeps, the trucks, and then you can see them operate in the fields and actually what they did and what it must have been like back during the war. We put on a battle scene and the rabbi who owns the tanks, they set up the whole thing with reenactors, both allied, German, and they will pick a time in history of a certain battle, whether it's at a city or out in the field or something like that, that actually happened in history, and they will do that reenactment. We also have a lot of people that, that bring parts and stuff to help keep these vehicles running. This is one of our guys right here. Uh, it takes a tremendous amount of work to keep these old vehicles running. That's what we do. Like I said, we call ourselves History in Motion, and that's what we want to teach. How important is it to get these young guys involved? It's absolutely 100% important because if we don't teach it, they're not going to learn it. It's going to go away. And they need to know what happened years ago so they don't make that mistake again. Uh, I, in my opinion, it's important that we raise up a new generation of mechanics. I don't mean parts changers. I don't mean the guys at Chevrolet, no offense, Dodge dealership where they have manuals and they have computers that shows them how to fix it. But when you hear that noise in a 1942 Ford GPW, there's no book that tells you what's wrong with it. It just needs to be learned. And there is very few mechanics today and a, that you can call a true mechanic. A mechanic gets his hands in it and works on it and uses his ears, his eyes to smell. I can smell your Jeep and smell if it's needing an intention, uh, running hot or anything. Uh, that's lost, that's a lost art. Mechanics is a lost art. There are the skirts up against the wall. Oh yeah, and there are the skirts. No, that covered the back wheels. And the front wheels. And the front wheels. Yeah. It kept it from cavitating when it was going in the water. Because these were, if you didn't have the side skirts on them when they were going to shore, it would because uh, air would be sucked in. You know, it's, 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 I, have to, I, have to, I have to watch the film, sir. Have you ever cavitated in the tub? <laughs>